Let's talk about The Voice Liberal member for Leichhardt. Warren Ench was in that party room meeting yesterday and joins us live now. Warren Ench, great to have you back on AIM Agenda. Are you happy with the, the position that the party room landed on yesterday? Oh, absolutely. I think it's uh, I think it's in a very good position. I mean, the, reali the reality is, uh, and I hear some of the commentators making comments saying that we're opposed to uh, any concept of... Uh, a voice that's going to improve the outcomes within the Indigenous communities, and that's a nonsense. And I think that decision yesterday reflected that. We are going to stay in the in the room, if you like. We're not throwing the, the toys out of the cot. Mm. We're, we're not going to oppose the, the mechanism that allows this to happen, but we're going to be putting up some, in my view, sensible, workable amendments. And... Uh, yeah. One of those, of course, is recognition. I think recognition is a no-brainer. And um, I think it's a mistake to put things, uh, put it into the, uh, you know, as part of an overall package. I think what has been put up uh, has been done for political expediency rather than for genuine desire to see change. And it's uh, all it's going to do, in my view, and I, and I have one of the larger remarks, you know, it's it's going to satisfy satisfy the political needs, but it's not going to satisfy the needs in my remote community. We need an up a bottoms up approach rather than a top. And you know, the images I'm watching now um, on my screen here shows me very remote communities. Mm. We need the voices of those elected, popularly elected leaders in those remote remote communities to be sitting at the table, specifically saying what they need in their communities, mm. not the voices of self-appointed uh, leaders that are metropolitan in many cases and, uh, and, and academic. And so there are the big changes that I think need to happen. And uh, we, you know, we've seen, we've seen it. I mean, ADSEC was supposed to be one of those programs that was going to be from, from the bottom up, bringing in regional representatives. And we've seen at the end of the day, it did not work. Then we had a situation, we course, closing the gap great thought great slogan but have a look at the outcome on it and the voice even talking to very strong proponents of the voice i say now how is it going to work how am i going to guarantee that my local popularly elected leaders very successful elected leaders yeah. how are they going to be able to contribute to this and how are we going to make that change how are we going to deal with remote disadvantage because much of what you show is being shown on TV is these very remote communities. Mm. But the needs of those communities very different, for example, for what's required in any metropolitan area, whether it be in, in Sydney and Redfern or even in my own community yeah. here, with access to a whole broad range of health, education, all those sort of things are available here. But the further you go out, mm. the remoter it is, they've got less and less options. And so okay. we need to be having leaders out there talking about things like childbirthing centres, their, their specific housing needs, talk about medical uh, alcohol and drug detox centres mm. close to where these communities are rather than bundling them up and sending them 1,000, 2,000 kilometres away to play and yeah, a that's, place where... that's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you about the challenge you perhaps on the, the idea that this is a rushed process. Your guys were in government for the last decade. It was Malcolm Turnbull who rejected the Uluru Statement from the Heart without so much of a, of, of a press conference. This has been talked about. There's been committee after committee, debate, um, you know, hand-wringing over the fact that more needs to be done to close the gap. Why didn't your side of government do more? Why have you just come up with this position now? Never, never, it's not a matter of just coming up to this position with respect. I mean, closing the gap, how long have they been working on that? There's a slogan for you. There is a vibe. This is what we're going to do. Have a look at the successes. You know, in many cases, they've gone backwards. Now, this is something, this was a proposal that was put up after the election last year. So, you know, it's less than 12 months in the incubation. There has been, uh, it's only been in the last, very short period of time that we've seen what the wording is. Mm. And a lot of the information that we are seeking 
to make sure that we're going down the right track, you know, the uh, uh, Solicitor General's report, etc., is continually being denied. Why don't we have that transparency? So it's not something that's been there over time. I mean, we, we talked about recognition in the Constitution back in uh, John Howard's time. That's right. In there, the way through the process. We're still yeah, but even about proponents what... of the no case um, reject that idea. They say it's race... We should have nothing race-based in the Constitution. And already so... some within the Liberals are saying they're going to actively campaign with that no camp. OK. And... and, and... At the end of the day, people are entitled to their own views. And, and I'm not going to argue one way or another, uh, another with them. I think, quite frankly, it's wrong. I mean, I was the chair of the Northern Australia Committee when we looked at the destruction of the Dugan Rock Shelters over in Western And let me tell you, it is a historical fact. Uh, in, in one of those shelters that was destroyed, they'd gone down two metres and they had unequivocal fact that there were Indigenous people living in that area at that point, at, at two metres, they were able to prove at 45,000 years. Now, so people are suggest, you know, there is those that suggest it could be back at 60,000. I'm not going to argue. If we go down another metre in that shelter, we may well find it's further than 60,000. But whatever it is, it is a historical fact, you know, that they have been here. And from my perspective, I cannot see any reason why that couldn't be acknowledged in the Constitution. People might have their own agendas as to why they do and they don't want it. It is a historical fact. And if I can't see why it shouldn't be acknowledged as such. Warren Ench, great to talk to you. We'll do it again soon. OK, all the best.